Good afternoon or good morning or good evening, depending on where you are listening today. Thank you all for joining me today for the 16th of our Columbia CVITS lecture series on the AC experience relating to COVID-19. I'm Kenioski Peñamora, Secretary Director of Columbia Center for Buildings, Infrastructure, and Public Space, and Edwin Howard Armstrong Professor of Civil Engineering and Engineering Mechanics at Columbia School Foundation for a School of Engineering and Applied Science. As the events of the last month have demonstrated, we are living during exceedingly challenging times, characterized by divide, distrust, and distances. However far apart we have been, however far apart we currently are, we need to learn to come together, to be together, to act together for social, economic, and environmental justice. I hope that the events of these days bring better understanding of the injustices that exist and become a catalyst to bring about real change for all. Along with many of our colleagues in New York City and around the world, the faculty and staff of the Center for Buildings, Infrastructure and Public Space would like to add our voices for those declining institutional racism in the AC industry. Today, our industry has a challenging work ahead to achieve true racial and gender inclusion we need to stand with our black architects, black engineers, black contractors, black suppliers, and black communities. We need to listen better, to learn better, and to incorporate the lessons of diversity and distress into the way we all working together reshape economically challenged communities. We need to build a better future for our industry, characterized by respect, opportunity, and collaboration. Acknowledging these aspirations and commitments, our lecture program will continue every Tuesday at noon into September with 19 talks from leaders in both the public and the private sectors. The lectures bring people together to address the impact, response, recovery, and preparedness of the architecture, engineering, and construction community in regard to the coronavirus pandemic. These talks, also relate to issues of social, economic, and environmental justice to the new normal post-COVID-19 AC world. Our past speakers were from Beijing, Boston, Chicago, London, Los Angeles, Paris, Sao Paulo, Washington DC, and Wuhan, as well as New York City. They all address the experiences of their offices in relation to COVID-19 impact, response, recovery and preparedness, we have heard about public buildings, civic infrastructure, COVID-19 medical facilities, and changes in office operations. Subsequent talks will focus on COVID-19 in relation to office operations in your city and the epidemiology of wastewater treatment. Please check our website to see more information about our next speakers and co-moderators. I also would like to thank the organizations with whom we are collaborating in presenting these lectures. They are the American Council of Engineering Companies, New York, thanks, Jay Simpson. The American Institute of Architects, New York Chapter, thanks, Ben Krosky. The American Society of Civil Engineers, thanks, Tom Smith. The Consortium for Sustainable Organization, thanks, Lance J. Brown. The Construction Management Association of America, New York and New Jersey, Thanks, Vinny Falkowski. Engineering News Record. Thanks, Jack Tuckman. And the National Academy of Construction. Thanks, Wayne Crew. Today, we turn to the experiences and lessons learned in South Korea, which has become a model worldwide for COVID-19 response, recovery, and preparedness. My co-moderator is Dr. Monsu Park, professor at the School of Engineering at Seoul National University. Professor Park, was accepted to the Department of Architecture of Seoul National University in 1985 and completed the courses for a bachelor's degree in 1989. Subsequently, completing a master's degree in city planning also at SMU in 1992. He received a master's degree and doctorate in project management at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 2001. After graduation, he worked 
uh, for the Department of Buildings at the National University of Singapore as an associate professor. Since 2005, he has been working as an associate professor at the Department of Architecture and Engineering at Seoul National University and as the director of the Lean Construction Research Center. Currently, he is teaching about a systemic approach for construction. Among his awards at SNU are Best Lecturer of the Year and Best Professor of the Year Award in the College of Engineering. Thank you for being here today, Monsu. Our speaker today is Professor Bob Nan Lee, University Industry Cooperation Professor at the Institute of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Seoul National University. Dr. Lee received his Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Inha University in 1976 and subsequent project management training in the United States. After graduating, we worked, he worked for two years at the Hyundai Engineering Construction Company, for almost 18 years at the Korea Power Engineering Company, and for eight years at the Construction Economy and Research Institute of Korea. Starting in 2005, he has concurrently have been teaching uh, at Dongwok University and Hanyang University, moving to Seoul National University as a teaching professor in project planning and management. Since 2014, he has been an in industry university cooperation professor at SMU. He is the innovation of the National Construction Industry Organization in South Korea and an ambassador at large for Asian Infrastructure Corporation. To learn more about our speaker and co-moderator, please visit the CBIPS website. Thank you both Professor Lee and Professor Park for being here with us today. And we look to, uh, forward to hearing your presentation, Professor Lee. Thank you. Thank you. And I try to help the global construction industry, even though it's not enough, but still, coronavirus pandemic is look like it's just the same COVID-19. I just studied about the impact assessment and the foresight construction uh, coronavirus pandemic for Korean construction industry and the construction side. What did, what was before Corona? What did happen in the after Corona? Then my presentation composed two parts. One part is the general idea of before Corona, after Corona, Korea. Part two, more focus in the construction job site. The estimation or forecasting how to realize at the job site. Then, background was that pandemic is not expected to last, not one time even and analyze how the pandemic outbreak variable will impact as known variables such as post-industry revolution and the digital transportation. The purpose of providing insights so that the local construction industry could establish a timely response strategy. External variables took part, like you know the Climate change, external various barriers, variables in the early 21st century, the post-industrial revolution and the digital transportation and the convergence, and the, finally the corona pandemic. The impact is different. The upper part impact market and the industry impact human. But the coronavirus is human impact industry and the market is a different of a different impact I estimate. Number assessment in the industry, the construction industry that you say the construction industry attribution is the dispersion and the fragmentation, but the after corona the construction industry integration and the convergence and the 
facility or construction product, infra product, single product for single purpose, but the single, the after corona, single product, but the multi purpose will be changed. And the other one is organizational structure and the business operations that historically Korean construction industry is the organization structure vertically. Direction is vertical, but the approval process is bottom up approach. But after Corona, the organization structure completely horizontal basis from vertical to horizontal. And the, the organization itself is permanent business operations, but after Corona, the project domain or is it project oriented organization will be changed. And the team organ, the team play, you know, in the Korean construction society, there are aggregation of grouping in the physical context. But now it's a distributed distributed and uh, shared. And instead of human touch, then untapped in Korean prevailing language is just untapped. And uh, what, what has happened to human resource and the training? The executive or management group uses the decision makers. But now the change after Corona, their function will be changed to so the strategist or leader. And the general manager is the director. Instead of director the after Corona, it's the planner or coordinator. Engineers attribution focusing on a single technology oriented engineer. But now they have to be changed multiplayer and the technology designer instead of one single engineering technology. And the craftsman will be changed operator, equipment machine operator. In the construction site, in general, before Corona, motor based manual labor with the equipment. But Generally speaking, the, after Corona, the automation and the remote control technology will be domain, and the, also intelligence-based brain power will govern the construction industry. And the, most of the production technology will be changed to manufacturing instead of on-site construction. But look like that construction side wet on-site construction from to the dry construction, off-site construction. You cannot see any more mixed concrete and mixed truck at the job site. Every piece of pre-manufactured or the module, it is transported to the job site and assembled at the job site and the engineering product the drawing and the specification will be normal in the paper. It's the to the building information modeling process, video, uh, virtual reality. And the specification is just for uh, labor workers, but it's now it will be changed to program the software. So machine operation will be operated as a program. And the CPM and the time-based schedule will be no more impact. The time-based simulation will be the main. And the visual inspection and visual monitoring will be changed, drone and the GPS and the check and the verifications. What I'm trying to say in the case study, tunnel construction site digital uh, digitalization experiment approach in the early project, as you see, the tunnel project is a big project. 
it's very uh, extensible project, extensible area and uh, long, long land. There are four points to working place, the exit, start and the end point and the slant shaft two locations, the slant shaft. That is uh, about uh, by end of May in the last year, it's uh, timely, 36% is progress, uh, last, but the actual progress was 27% roughly. But now it's almost 50%. It's very speed up the project itself. The project overview is a tunnel length is around 9,150 yards. Total 68 merges. Cost is 488 million US dollar project. Contract structures, the delivery methodology is the design, did build approach. There is no more engineering construct, uh, consultant at the job site. The client is public agency. Under the client, then construction contract the consortium exists. If you look at the right side, the digital transformation consultation group is helping the both client and the construction contractor. The characteristic of a local tunnel construction site is that very much labor, manual labor intensive, uh, in, intensive, but work of the skill, lack of skilled workers. Only experienced tunnel engineers make decisions. That makes a, a problem that both limited resource and the talent. And the higher casualties compared to other construction sites. And uh, the worst thing is the majority of engineers and uh, craftsmen, they hesitate to assign the tunnel job site because it is a dangerous and a dirty and a difficult project. Current the tunnel last best rating evaluation process is that the first perforation and blasting. After blasting, automatic clean up, then lab evaluation and the chocolate. After that, chocolate, the lab work and the spotting. This is a cycle work. 24 hours is a day. Every Every day is working. Ceaseless construction. If you look at the sequence, it's just a sheer construction, not overlap. But uh, to evaluate la less and the la quality designation rate, more than 20 items to evaluate. And it takes more than 30 minutes. Plus go to next step, it takes 35 minutes, uh, five minutes more. It takes a lot of time. So current uh, tunnel pacemaking process is that after blasting, you have to, at the site, you have to analyze the physical eye contact. You have to visit on the excavation surface, then experienced engineer and the craftsman, their discussion, the, the problem is the competence level is the big difference. It depends person, personal. And the interpretation is very ambiguous. It's very sticky. And also, there are a lot of documents, but document and the data, but the poor utilization. Data is data and the document is document, but rarely use it. And the 
also these are a lot of that means the quality is very low. And that makes continuous vicious cycle, the low and the poor competence make poor interpretation. Then the result is low credibility. Then peace mapping, poor peace mapping is you have to change the or rework or redesign work. That makes the poor quality and the low productivity. So they discussed it, the job site, they discussed it. To in innovate the technology, the tunnel construction site, this is this uh, there is some background that not the, against the corona pandemic, they already started it impacted by ripple effect of post-industry revolution and also the digital test the digital transformation movement and the worst thing was tunnel workers and the quality is very low lack of skills and also Korean government imposed the la uh, labor regulation you know the US pay US already the prevailing wage rate. Also they adopted the Korean construction site laborers and also they restricted fifty two hours maximum per week, no more. That automatically that need to innovate productivity and also too many accidents. So prevention of safety estimate, especially human injuries. They started to look at the digital convergence technology possibility to the analog construction site. The corona pandemic accelerated the digitalization of the construction site. So they expect the expectation of full scale digitalization through the experiment. They And uh, both the client and the country organization, they set up uh, and the challenge that zero uh, casualties, very aggressive, the target, and the schedule reduction by 30% comparing the conventional approach, and the construction status monitoring by real time. Any place, any workers, or any equipment monitored at any time. And the workers' for protection from COVID and the dust in the tunnel blasting, you know, the, in the tunnel inside the, after blasting, a lot of fine dust and the very toxic gases automatically is generated. So they want to innovate the technology of COVID verification through the experience, experimental side. They try to the conventional approach to digital approach, digital technology. They surveyed and they studied about the available, applicable and the available technology review to adopt. His technology is available, his technology they will choose was the tunnel excavation surface analysis detailed conventional process. But uh, they analyzed the pace mapping by big data. If the big data is available, then pace mapping will be upgraded. Then immediate recognition technology. That means machine learning technology may be adopted in the immediate processing technology. And also the process innovation from serial construction to parallel construction, time reduced by fast track. And the digital lab best rating evaluation system from experienced engineer to data driven environment. And they start to review and they start to merge those technologies, the big data and the 
but intelligence technology or that they combine with virtual reality. That is nearly at the construction site that real-time construction information monitoring equipment, you see left of the, the car equipment, the wireless community connection and the movable CCTV and the 3D scanners. And the dragon eyes, which is in the side, side camera will monitor whenever it moves. Then the car is moved and into into the, the tunnel. They also remote monitoring, remote observation, and finally, near site observation, whether it's matched with the, the data, they given the data. They installed six cameras. These are the cameras in the tunnel inside. Monitor in the, every second for the, how much impact, how much change. Then finally, they decided that face mapping design, whether they accept it or not. That means that not quality designation, the lot mass weighting. That face mapping design in each hole, they need more. And the gunpowder is more reinforcing or not. And the what types of spot they need right after the blasting, they decided right on time. Then safety monitoring system architect that every engineer and every worker inside the tunnel, they in the helmet, they have an RFID bar without a head, without head with the RFID bar. They are not allowed to get into the tunnel inside. That means every time, every hill, they monitor the inside the tunnel. And also, the surface conditions are checked every second. Then, the connection is the monitor the data with the connection with external communications. Then they will review safety status right now and uh, real time measurement safety, late safety monitoring, and the environment sensor also working. Every engineer or managers outside the tunnel can be monitored by mobile phone. They identified what is called the status. And the tunnel inside the environment sense measurement system is also works. Every time the car and the machines in the inside the tunnel and the blast makes a dust and the atmosphere is contaminated, they check every second. Then they have a certain limit. Every worker has an obligation to work, stay in the tunnel inside maximum four hours. If you uh, over the working hour inside the tunnel more than four hours, then automatically the signal is, is sent to him that he has to be out. Otherwise, some guide or foreman will take him out. That is monitored by automatically. If you look at the control site monitoring system, it's like a dashboard panel. In the outside, just in front of the tunnel in the top or in your office, your monitor can see the current status overall in by 
despotic right is covered what is current excavation progress status and what spot type is designed and also what types of spotting pattern they decided and what is the next step for blasting patterns and also the learning curve the data information accumulated and compared with the current the data and if you look at the, the environment the tunnel inside there are five different signals oxygen CO2 and the hydrogen and the combustible gas and the pine dust the signal you can see the green signal is okay but uh, if you look at yellow or red automatically uh, operate the very expensive equipment uh, uh, ventilation equipment will automatically start to operate it. the current internet assessment to the experiment project is the 3D the tunnel project in Korea usually they say it's 3D is a dangerous difficult dirty project it's possible to construct site to do digital radiation and the analytical time is 50 percent just the half reduction and the drastically reduce the human error reduction and uh, reduction construction duration by process overlapping and uh, they are pretty sure that zero casualty estimates they prevented it and the uh, relief from shortage of experienced engineers and the skilled craftsmen and also they are granted the working environment improvement for the laborers they achieved it and also the remote control through the mobile device it works so they targeted the day interim evaluation in the assessment they should show the green light then they will, this technology will expand every project in Korea especially the public agent they decide to uh, expand it uh, my final conclusion is that market and client demand change the service provided the contract or engineers they must exceed expectation the evolutionary new technology will appear I'm pretty sure I'm not I do not know exactly but the revolutionary new technology will appear after COVID-19 pandemic but the new technology not new but existing technology convergence will demand that means it's mandatory to train for the engineers to switch jobs and the knowledge you have to train them the conventional technology is no more effective I mean in the within short time the new technology will govern before that your engineers must be trained and the construction would be governed by the convergence technology and uh, the new technology or conversion technology is essential to build a platform for technology and the knowledge sharing for just the one single entity or single company to develop is too many restrained expertise and the time and the cost so I recommend my conclusion is that recommend to come on and develop and the, the user needs to customize their own demand I strongly recommend that joint development is is more effective I think that is my conclusion Thank you for your attention. Huh. Uh.
Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Marie, uh, for excellent presentation. Q&A mm -hmm. session uh, with a few questions received in advance. Uh, first, we, uh, you suggest that the uh, variable of the pandemic outbreak will affect the known variable of the first industrial revolution, which Professor Klaus words of the World Economic Forum said will bring changes perspective of human history. Uh, there has never been a time of uh, greater promise or potential peril. Is it possible to think of the coronavirus as a development that will accelerate the strategic acceptance of the IoT and the uh, Internet of uh, Systems innovations shaping our future? Yeah, uh, thank you for your questions. It's not easy, but uh, we have to admit that uh, both construction industry and the construction company or engineers are very conservative. So the pace, pace of adaptation to change in new technology is very slow. And I also to admit that not all industry and the technology can be free from post revolutions and or digital transformations. Sure, yes, I agree. And I'm pretty sure that the construction industry has to accept IO technology, the convergence with current construction process and the technology. My Personal experience at print project since the 2009, I am still involved with that project, tells that IoT components with design and the construction process is a core technology of configuration management system. Core configuration management system prevents poor quality and also it acts uh, still effective in the operating and the maintenance phases. I'm very proud of that evaluation. The computer management system is composed of IoT technology. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, thank you both of you. Thank you, Professor Lee, for such an insightful presentation. I really like um, the connotation of using the AC, BC, before Corona, after Corona, and kind of looking at that parallel world between kind of the traditional mechanisms uh, and technologies that we have used to the new, uh, more uh, digitized technology. So uh, I really appreciate your uh, insights on the situation that we are encountering all of us in, around the world. And thank you, Monsu, for agreeing to participate as part of this uh, program. I know that with the distance and the time differences, uh, it, it's really uh, appreciated your dedication and we are very grateful. I just want to have a question, uh, Professor Lee, based on uh, earlier um, submissions uh, that speaks about that last week, uh, the CBIPS lecture, um, we focused on the 10-day construction of the Ho Shen Chang and Li Shen Chang Hospital in Wuhan in a lecture uh, called Integrated Construction Techniques for Hospitals and Conti of Contiguous Diseases in Emergency Action. Um, at that time, uh, one question that was asked was that uh, combining Internet of Things and extensive use of off-site modular fabrication, uh, if it could be replicated in other countries, including the U.S. So uh, one question that um, is being asked uh, for you, based on the presentation that you gave and the introduction of this new highly digitized world in construction, how prevalent do you think these new techniques will be in Korea, in South Korea, and also 
how do you think this will be able to be deployed and used in other parts of the world? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I also very surprised that Wuhan Hospital 10-day construction project. The technology is already is available in Korea and also, but it's just a laboratory experiment test bed, not in common. But the uh, module construction of Wuhan Hospital in China is a slightly different from case by case. It depends on the type of facility, but the concept and the technology is effectively replicated sufficiently. So I want to say that upside construction and the model construction method are not passion technology. It's a trend. The passion is a one time, it's very short period. But trend is that you have to go there. The long period continues there. So the modular and the upside construction technology is not passion, but trend technology. And in Korea, everyone agrees with the modular construction and the automation need for manufacturing side. Everybody agree that. But however, only the, the reading companies are reading the actual technology development and the applications. So the remaining part have to follow the, the reading group. It says that not in common, but the, they will follow the leading group. That, that, is, not, uh, that is my answer. Thank you. My second question is uh, uh, the Australian Society of Engineers and Architects defines natium as a method where the surrounding rocks or soil formations of a tunnel are uh, integrated into an overall ring-like uh, support structure. Does the uh, supporting formations will themselves be part of this supporting structure? Uh, phase mapping during tunnel construction is necessary to anticipate issues of uh, stability and uh, for the design of the best support systems. A geologic survey of the tunnel phases gives uh, necessary information about geological conditions and the work tunnel phases gives necessary information uh, about the geological conditions and the work environment. What makes uh, uh, phase mapping of a tunnel sections difficult? And uh, the vicious cycle, you show the list uh, issues of poor competency and poor interpretation. But uh, as this correctable through experience and the training, uh, in some point, I agree, but there are two main reasons for the rep is why it is difficult to get two main reasons. One is the shortage of advanced engineer or prominent engineers for their technology. First, it is problem of avoiding tunnel construction because the tunnel construction is dangerous, dirty, and difficult, naming the 3D. So no one is want to involve it. And the, the second reason is that the excellent engineer expert for tunnels is very limited due to Korean market is not enough to sufficient for their workplaces, so that is that is the reason why they in the engineering side in the era of the lack of conversion technology or new technology, the most obvious solution was to foster highly qualified engineers. It is okay, but the, the current situation changed as 
too many available technologies like big data automation and machine learning based AI technology that can replace the experienced engineers. That is one of the reasons why they experience digital radiation. So, generally speaking, the industry prefers to do replacing new technologies rather than training highly qualified engineers. This takes time and also a lot of money to train them. So the industry starts uh, moving to available technology instead of uh, 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 training the engineers. I think that is my answer. Thank you, uh, Professor Lee. And, and I think following up on Mansoor's question, um, the whole notion of what you showcases of the DC before Corona in terms of the uh, labor and equipment and to the AC of more automation, remote control. Um, you were uh, now talking about the need for highly skilled labor. Um, are there other components that are necessary in order for this transition to be uh, successful, to go from kind of the DC um, way of working in construction to the AC way of working in construction? Are there factors of government regulations? Uh, are there investments that are necessary to be done in order for this jump to occur? Yeah, I fully agree that, uh, uh, especially in Korea, the regulation is very severe and very restrictive. The new technology not proven through the project is prohibited to apply it. But the government side and the politician and engineers, they agree that they have to change it, but it takes time. So it is, uh, uh, to me, it's a trend at the time. The trend is you must change it, but it takes time. But in, in, in a certain time, you cannot 100% to change it gradually, but the speed is getting faster and faster. I'm pretty sure the, uh, I'm an engineer. It, very beginning, seismic analysis in the nuclear power plant. Now, at that time, the computer program is very limited, the function is very limited, and the hardware is too much time consuming. But now, your personal, uh, your notebook, and your, even your tel uh, cellular phone solves the dead issues. That is how much change you know, know the past. The most of the high barriers in the Korean construction slide to change or to advance the technology to me is negligence. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, my last question. Uh, uh, your conclusion slide indicates that uh, there was no allowance to choose uh, avoid corona pandemic influence, which is understandable for critical that could not be changed. Then uh, one made this tunnel excavation sensitive in the eyes of the uh, source of the project funding. Uh, in the, the pilot project or the case study project, the tunnel is located in Naman Samsung. That is, there are many Korean historical 
artifacts on the mountain side in the surface. Teach the thermal passes under the mountain. In the event of the crack or subsidence due to blasting, there is a high risk that construction will be stopped due to civil complaint. You know the what, what means a civil complaint? Every construction job site should be stopped. In the event of damage to surroundings due to tunnel construction, a significant impact on the schedule delay inevitably occurs. Also, restriction on access roads to the tunnel construction site are also a major obstacle to compliance. The tunnel, the case study tunnel is in a critical path for the completion of 130 kilometers expressway, new expressway. So the both client and the contractor must pay great attention to that. It's critical and also very congestionary, many historical heritages lies everywhere in the mountain, surface mountain. Thank you. Uh, and Professor Lee, uh, one question that uh, is being asked is the notion that a lot of the technology that you present in the case study of the tunnel construction um, seems to be almost like kind of ready to be deployed. Um, were those technologies already being proposed for the tunnel before coronavirus, or were they brought in after coronavirus to see how the project could continue and uh, working on the project continue to meet this deadline? The tunnel experimental digital region is already before coronavirus. They were already started due to the, you know, the Korean government imposed very strict labor the, Welfare improvement is the, you have to pay prevailing wage is the U.S. version. Mm -hmm. the product, productivity still remains as it is, but the payment is much more higher than nearly 70% that what is currently existing. And also they restrict the, the working hour per week is 52 hours is maximum, no more. That means usually Korean construction sites operate 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Now they start, they suddenly start five days a week in maximum. So the contract and the client has to find a new approach there. Then they started to explain the digital region. They maybe help them to release those issues and then corona pandemic impact or not impact that the construction site must continue with, uh, in any circumstance that you must monitor and control that job working progress 24 hours a day as a remote. So remote technology is not issues to edit in the existing technology, or they started to develop the technology. Oh, thank you. Monsieur, do you have another question? No, no, it's, I think it's enough. It's, yeah. Th th thank you. And, and Professor Lee, I, I just want to thank all of you for uh, your participation, again, for such an illustrative uh, presentation and, and uh, helping us understand the work that is happening in um, Korea and particularly with the test that you highlighted for us to uh, work. I think that's really um, very interesting and I really appreciate you um, uh, sharing with us all that information. I also would like to thank Monsu for uh, his participation and for his questioning. Um, and I really think that 
uh, we gain a better appreciation of the challenges of the construction industry in South Korea, uh, particularly uh, after uh, Corona and some of the uh, kind of interventions and work that is being done to um, uh, help continue the progress of the construction projects um, within this challenging environment. Uh, so thanks both of you, Professor Lee, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Park, for participating today. I also would like to thank the, uh, our collaborating organizations, ACEC New York, AIA New York, ASCE, CMA New York, New Jersey, CSU, ENR, and NAC. I also would like to thank um, the, all of you and the past speakers as well as past co-moderators that have joined us today and especially to all, everybody that is out there in the offices, in the agencies, at home, throughout New York City and around the world for taking time to listen, especially those in Seoul who are listening now at 2 in the morning. Continuing education credit for architects have been requested. If you are seeking credit, please send your name by email to cbips at columbia.edu. I also would like to thank my colleagues at the Columbia Center for Buildings, Infrastructure and Public Space, uh, Michael Smith, Charles Chang, and Rick Bell, without whom this program would not be possible. They are the magician behind the curtain, making sure that everything works well and that the program that we deliver to you week after week is actually of the highest quality possible. So thank you so much for all your work and your dedication to this series. Uh, the speaker on Tuesday, September 1st, the 17th lecture in the series will be Doug Matt, President of Consentini Associates. My co-moderator will be Lance Gay Brown, President of the Consortium for Sustainable Organization. And on Tuesday, September 8th, the 18th lecture in the series will be given by Dr. Patrick Chandran, a professor of Earth and Environmental Engineering at Columbia University. My co-moderator will be Jay Simpson, President and Executive Director of ACC New York. On our website at cbips.engineering.columbia.edu, you can find information about past lectures, including the PowerPoint presentations and video recordings of the talk. You can also find information about upcoming lectures in the program. And also on our website are thoughts about the reopening of workplaces and in addition, ideas about the reopening of restaurants and bar spaces. I would like to thank all of you for participating today. Thanks again, Professor Lee. Uh, thanks again, Professor Park for your participation. Um, you have really given us a lot of food for thought and we are very appreciative for you taking the time uh, to share your experiences um, in Korea, as well as the challenges that the construction industry in Korea are facing, as well as what they are doing about it. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful <laughs> uh, evening or good night, because now is a uh, time uh, really late for you. So thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us. And thanks to everybody here for participating. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to participate and share your idea and thank you for your your contribution for the global consultants desire. Okay, thank okay, you. Thanks, it was my pleasure to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Monsu. Yeah, thank you, Fanny, and bye and